Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed my review of book five. That was really fun. And now I've recently just got done review re of reading book six. And, well, let's talk about it. Um, again, I'm going to say the same thing that I do in my other videos because I know that there are some people that do that are in the Wings of Fire fandom that aren't, you know, my age and don't say a lot of the stuff that I do, but, um, I'm gonna be cursing, and, you know, if you're not okay with that, I, I, I get it, just, and if, if you are okay with that, and you don't want, you like, your parents to hear or something, I don't know, put on headphones or some shit, because I'm, I'm gonna curse, so, it, it's inevitable, it's gonna happen. So, Wings of Fire book 6 is actually the first time I think in a Wings of Fire book I just said, that was okay, that wasn't amazing. Nothing really eventful really happens, but I will talk about it. So, Moon Rising, the title of book 6. We're introduced with a new character named Moon. She's a Nightwing that has grown up in the rainforest and was not with the volcanoes and everything that the other Nightwings were. So, in a way, she's kind of like Starflight. She's kind of an outsider. She doesn't really know what the hell the Nightwings are all about. She has powers, by the way, unlike Starflight, and we're going to get into a lot of things here, because a lot of crazy shit happens. She can read people's minds and everything, and she can she kind of has visions of, like, futures and everything. And, you know, she's going to... And By the way, all the characters that you love... Clay, Tsunami, Sunny, and Starflight are now background characters now because this is a new arc and whatever the hell that's supposed to be. Hang on a second. So we're introduced to new characters that are going to be the main characters and Moon is one of the new ones. Uh, I kind of have mixed feelings about that, but I knew it was going to happen. I just, I knew it was going to happen. It was been, it's been spoiled for me, so I already know. Um, a lot of things have been spoiled for me, by the way, so I need to put that out there before I start talking more about this. Um, so basically, at the end of books, at the end of book five, they move to Jade Mountain, and they're setting up, and I don't know how I feel about this still, they're setting up a school there. It's just like, this is what they did? Okay, but... Why, though? <laughs> okay, but it, in all seriousness, it is kind of cool that they are doing something kind of useful. They didn't just go back to their homes and everything. They're just like, hey, everyone can come here. You know, we can have it where everyone from every they call them tribes but i really just call them like factions or different races or whatever because that's pretty much what they are i think faction sounds cooler but i don't think that's correct um can all come here and we could all talk because there's no more war and we could all be cool together and everything and that's what they're doing they're setting up a big school there so people can learn and everything like that's actually kind of cool so Moon gets there and, you know, she really misses because her mom, like, left her there. She's just like, you know, this is going to be good for you, even though she's reading her mom's mind and she's just like, I don't fucking know if this is going to be a good idea, actually. <laughs> but she leaves her anyway. And <laughs> as soon as she gets there, shit starts to get weird. And I really like this dynamic to this book. She starts hearing a voice in her head. And... I really, really like this part. This voice starts talking to her, starts explaining to her what her powers are and everything, and she's like, who the hell? Okay, you're talking to me. You're another telepathic dragon. Okay, are you here? Who are you? And the voice is just like, we really don't know, do you? And, you know, he kind of, like, avoids it. The voice kind of really, like, avoids who, who it is. And she's thinking, like, okay, someone's fucking with me. It's not Kinkachu or anything, because... Oh, I forgot to mention that. She met, she meets Kinkachu and Quibbly. And we're also introduced to Winter here, who... is kind of a dick, but he... He's got potential. I like him. He's, he's not he's not bad. Um, and, you know, she's like, Okay, someone's screwing with me. I think a dream visitor is being used here. 
I'm gonna read up on these things. So she goes, and Starflight has a freaking library! Oh, I'm so happy for him! I am so happy- he deserves that. Even though he's blind, I love that he has a freaking library. I love him. He's the best. I feel so bad for him, but at the same time, I'm so happy because that's something he's always wanted. Like, oh, I love you, Starflight. You stay awesome, dude. Um, and she starts reading up on it and everything, and the voice keeps talking to her. He's just like, yeah, start reading about uh, the Dark Stalker, and I think the character's name is Fathom or Phantom. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry. I think it's Fathom. Like, it's supposed to be like, because he's, I believe that character's a Sea Wing. Um, I'm going to say Fathom. That's probably the co correct way to pronounce it. But then again, I pronounce names horribly. Mind you, there's a character that I was reading in an online comic named Zira, and I was pronouncing it Zeria. Like, I'm an idiot. Anyway, um, like this. Uh, why did I think that that name was pronounced that? I'm stu I'm sorry, I'm getting off track there. Um, and they're going into, like, he's re she's reading the scrolls, and they're really talking about, like, just how much of, like, an asshole Darkstalker was. Like, you know, like, he killed so many things, and she starts, like, really reading about it, and he's just like, like, the voice in her head is telling her just like, yeah, this is, like, really, like, exaggerated and everything. This is not what happened. And she's just like, wait, but, okay, but why are you telling me this? She just goes, oh, yeah, I'm Darkstalker. I was like, called it. It's him. I knew it. I like this dynamic. I really like the Darkstalker in her head thing. Like, could that happen to me? Like, in real life? Can I have Darkstalker just talk to me in my head all the time? I would be so happy. <laughs> bitch, if he's lonely, bitch, talk to me. I'm nice. No, uh, okay, I'll stop. Anyway. Um, but I gotta admit, he's not what I expected at all. From what I've seen in, like, fan art and, like, everything, they always draw him as, like, big and imposing and really, like, mean-looking. But here, he's kind of, like, nice and actually kind of funny. <laughs> like, I was actually kind of laughing at some of his lines. Like, he just goes, like, I forget what they were talking about, but he's just like, you could always kill her. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm a nightmare evil dragon, remember? Like, he just kind of, like, jokes around like that. Like, I didn't expect that. I really don't expect that. I like him. I actually do. Uh, I actually find him kind of funny, and I don't know if he's like that throughout his book, which I have right here. And this is... I guess, I know Darkstalker's big, but... D <laughs> d damn, my boy, you're a lot heavier than I remember. <laughs> he's super heavy. You go sit on top of Crash Bandicoot over there. Oh, he fits! <laughs> I have... Oh, shit, no, he doesn't. I was gonna say, I have, I have Crash Bandicoot, and he was... He was holding Darkstalker. <laughs> uh, but anyway, anyway, off track. Um, I really like this dynamic, and I was actually... Those were the best parts, I think, about this book, is Moon talking to Darkstalker, because she's, like, this shy character and everything, and, like, Darkstalker's kind of, like, out there. Like, he's just kind of, like, really, like... I, I don't know how to describe him, but he's actually surprisingly charismatic. Like, he's actually kind of fun. Um, he's not as fun as a character like Scarlet is, but he's still actually kind of fun. <laughs> he's not as funny as Deathbringer, but he's... I liked him. I actually really liked Darkstalker. I'm actually surprised. I guess, uh... What's her face? Um, one of my friends is right about him. Uh... What else can I talk about with book six? Um, hang on, I gotta get a drink. My throat's killing me. One thing I actually really like about Darkstalker in this book is that he's really trying to drive home the point. He's... Okay, so what's happening with Darkstalker? I didn't even I didn't even talk about that. I completely glanced over the fact. I'm just talking about how he is. He woke up, and he's explaining what happened to him. Basically, because... Oh, that's what I forgot to mention! She's reading about how Darkstalker was stopped. And it was by something that was put on him that made him fall asleep and never wake up because he's unkillable you can't can't kill him like you could you could stab this bitch in the gut you could like uh, 
I don't know, give that bitch really bad Taco Bell or something, I, I don't know. And it wouldn't kill him, like, nothing can kill him. And this basically just made it where he could just fall asleep and never wake up. And she's just like, okay, and he just goes, it was a bracelet, by the way. Like, that's how, like, that's how he starts, like, revealing who he is, and it's just like, oh, shit. <laughs> but basically what happens is he's just like, I don't know where I am. <laughs> and I actually kind of like that, like, I like that he's not, like, mean. I don't know, I, I'm still describing how he is, but I'm not explaining where he is. He says that he's trapped, he can't move. And he says that there's sunlight coming through, and there's a breeze, and there's occasionally a bug or a mouse that he could eat, because even though he can't die, this bitch still get hungry. You know he likes to have himself some chicken wings, but he ain't getting them because he's stuck wherever the hell he is. I know where he's stuck, by the way, because that's spoiled for me. I know that he's trapped under a mountain or some shit like that. I, I know that. That's been spoiled. And I know... <sighs> because this bitch came back, by the way, that at the, at the end of this bitch's book, that, that he comes out, and it's after freaking Scarlet dies, and I don't get to see them interact with each other. Fuck! Oh my god, no! <laughs> I kind of want to see what they would be like, like if Scarlet met Darkstalker. Oh my god, man. Oh, You know what? Okay, if Scarlet had to die, alright. But if she got killed by Darkstalker, I would accept that much more. But I know the way she dies in her book, and it pisses me off because I'm getting so close to her book. Ah! Oh! <laughs> oh, damn it. I have to read Winter's book, and then I'm moving on to... I think Darkstalker, because whatever keeps me away from this is better for me. I am going to drink so much alcohol while I'm while I'm reading this book. You guys have no idea. Jack Daniels Honey Whiskey, it, it numbs the pain, believe me. Anyway, um, back to my review of book six. <laughs> Seems like every review I do, I'm complaining about that one. I wonder what that is. Anyway, um, so I forgot to mention they're all broke down into what's called winglets, which is kind of funny because that's also the name of another book series that the same author of these does, and they're Wings of Fire winglets, and they're about, like, off characters, like, um, Deathbringer and stuff like that. Like, he has one, and I believe, um, I was actually corrected from my, uh, book six review that there's a winglet book about the two that were at Thorn's place and then got prisoner and got taken into some sort of prison when she's just like, yeah, put them on somewhere unpleasant. You know that what I was talking about. Apparently, there's a book about those two, so uh, it's called Prisoners or something. Um, but she's stuck with Kinkachu and I believe a Skywing who I can't pronounce her name off the top of my head. But I hated this Skywing character, and she dies, thankfully. But I'm just like, like she's talking about, she's just like, I, I was a warrior with Queen Ruby, and Scarlet's still out there, and I would kill Scarlet myself. And I'm just like, shut the fuck up, I fucking hate you, stop trying to kill my bae, okay? <laughs> she dies, but... Okay, so here's where we're gonna get into something that I can't say this is what kind of bothers me about this book so moon is having visions and stuff like that of oh wait we forgot to oh no 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 we forgot okay so i don't have a script by the way um she runs into you know she goes to see where everyone's going to eat with because she's walking around with kinkachu and really uh exploring everything and stuff like that <laughs> They're chasing around a bunch of chickens, and Clay's just like, Stop, chickens! You're gonna die! Just accept it! We're gonna eat you, you dumb bitches! <laughs> and, like, <laughs> that wasn't the funny part. Um, a bunch of dragons start chasing after a scavenger, and Moon grabs it, and she's just like, You know, it's okay, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna rip you apart like all the other dragons are. 
And this big ice wing just like pins her down and he's just like, give me that fucking scavenger right now. I'm gonna fucking freeze you to death or some shit. Like he he's starting to get like brutal. He's just like he's like, first I'll freeze your wings and then break them off. Then your wings. Do I need to keep going? Like it's just like, oh, whoa, man. Okay, okay. I mean, you could, you could, you have it back, man. Okay, <laughs> we're cool. We're cool. <laughs> like the, I, when he when he started saying stuff like that, I'm just like, damn, <laughs> this dude's a savage. But it turns out that's Winter. This is his, um, this is like his pet, basically. Uh, I don't care about the scavengers at all. I'm not sure why the author of these books really tries to focus on them. I get it. I, I get that they're supposed to be humans, but like, I just don't really like it. It, because here's the thing that I have with it is like, if you want them to be humans, have it where they can interact with them. Have it where they can be like, okay, I can understand what they're saying, but in this, they can't. So there's almost no point of them being there, besides them just making weird noises and stuff like that. That's kind of a big missed opportunity. I feel like if the humans could understand them and they could understand them, it would be so much better. But that's just a little bit rant on that. So yeah, this Winter, and we're introduced to Winter and Quibbly. They're stuck together. They're both their winglets and whatever. And I like their dynamic because Winter is this stuck-up kind of asshole character. He always has to remind people that he's, like, the nephew of, like, the Queen of the Ice Wings and whatever. And, like, Quibbly is this, like... He's basically like this guy that's always like poking at him, like, like, just picture like he's always like, like a really uptight person and like Quibbly is like always poking at him with a stick. That's basically how it is. Like he's, he's trying to, I mean, I know what he's doing. He's always joking with him and kind of making fun of him, but he's not doing it in a mean way. He's trying to break the ice there, literally, because he's an ice wing. But he can tell that, like, okay, he's actually a normal person, but he just has this stuck-upness about him, and if I could break that, maybe we could actually talk. And that's what Quibbly is, and I kind of got to give him credit there. He's a lot better than I thought he was. Because um, in book six, he was just kind of meh. Um, I like their kind of dynamic. He's actually kind of funny. Um, I'm trying to think what else... Um, so, I'm gonna jump a little bit ahead. <clears throat> Moon is having, um, a vision. And, oh my god, I forgot about this. Freaking, uh, well, I, I kind of mentioned it already, but Peril's there. Luckily, she doesn't have that many lines in it, but... Ugh. It hurts a little bit of my soul every time she shows up. But anyway, um, she's having this vision of one of the classrooms that they're going to go to, and it's exploding. <laughs> like, dragons on fire, death everywhere, and she's just like, holy shit, I don't know if this is real, but I gotta stop it. And uh, Tarmine, I think her name is, goes in. I liked her, she was really cool in book three. Goes in, and I think with another character, yeah, with that Skywing character that I didn't like, and another character who was a Sea Wing, not a Sea Wing, a Night Wing. Oh, I didn't even talk about that! Tsunami's sister comes back, and so does Queen Coral, so she's alive, thankfully. I like Queen Coral. Um, I never reviewed book two, at least I don't think so. Um, but. An enemy's a bitch! She's a fucking asshole! Like. She acts like a spoiled piece of shit. Like, this dude's just sitting there, minding his own business. Tsunami brought a bunch of fish for everyone to eat. This one Nightwing's just like, okay, you know, I'm just gonna sit by myself and just eat this one fish. There's plenty for everyone. An enemy walks over and she's just like, I want that, what you're having. Like, she's like such a fucking asshole. Like, leave him alone, you fucking piece of shit. Anyway, um, yo, she really made me mad. I'm sorry. But... <sighs> I'm so sorry if I went on, like, really bad there. But yeah, basically what happens... 
her vision is true, and that classroom explodes. And the Skywing character dies, and I believe that Nightwing that an enemy was talking to died. And Tarmine, she's hurt, but she's okay. Thankfully, she's blind for God's sake. Like, oh my God. Like, I felt so bad. I was just like, oh no. I, like, I, I felt like, I was just like, if she dies, I'm going to be so upset. Um, <clears throat> and they're trying to figure out, basically, who did it. <laughs> I like that. Okay, I forgot to mention this. Darkstalker is always talking to her for most of the book. And I actually, that's like the best part of this book. I'm going to be completely honest. That is like my favorite thing about this book. Is the fact that she, he's always in her head and is always talking to her. He's just like, you can't do this. You know, I'm looking into the future and I'm seeing that this is going to happen and this is going to happen. And there's a percent chance of this happening. Which, by the way, if he was talking to me and telling me stuff like this, my response would be, never tell me the odds. He wouldn't get the reference, but I would say it. Anyway, um, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> I got the giggles. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's perfect. I mean, it's such a good line to say. So yeah, this is what happens. Um, this whole big explosion that hurt and killed two dragons and left one injured. And now, most of the book just seems to focus on finding out who does, who did it. And it comes up much later. The explanation is kind of... I wasn't too big on it. If you've read the book, you know who it is. It's one of Clay's sisters who did it, trying to kill Winter's sister, uh, Icicle, um, because she killed one of them, and she's just like, oh, I gotta get revenge and everything, even though the war's over and everything. And Oh my god, I thought this was kind of stupid, but I'm just like, I mean, I guess at least she gets name-dropped in this. Apparently, she's working with Queen Scarlet, and I'm like, would Queen Scarlet do that? Would she be like, hey, work with me? I don't... I don't know, I haven't read book 8 yet, but I don't... I always saw her as being like, if she wants to get revenge, she's gonna do it herself, but... I don't know, I guess... I guess it's true. Okay, something I didn't know about Scarlet. Uh, I still love her, though. <laughs> Hey, I don't care what the hell she does. <laughs> She's my favorite, no matter what. <laughs> in the epilogue of this book, she visits Peril in a dream. <laughs> Peril has nightmares about Scarlet, bitch. If I was dreaming about Scarlet, bitch, I'd be chilling. I'd be like, yo, yo, we got a lot to talk about. How you doing, by the way? You want to get some coffee? Hold up. Anyway. So yeah, most of the book just seems to focus on kind of like a who did it kind of thing. And, um, you know, once you know what happened and everything... By the way, Icicle, holy shit, she fucked up Starflight. Like, because she's basically being told by Scarlet, like, Hey, um, I have your bro hostage here. Uh, he's still at my Sky Palace. He's he's chilling in the prison or whatever. Um, you could have him back if... I mean, I don't really want him. If you kill the people that fucked my life over. If you kill at least one of them. Ic Icicle is basically just like, okay... And that's basically why her motivation is to kill, you know, Clay, Sunny, Tsunami, Glory, and Starflight. Is because she just wants to get her brother back. But goddamn, she's an asshole. <laughs> I really didn't like Icicle. I mean, she wasn't in it for very long. They didn't really build her up. There's no real parts... Except there's maybe like a couple parts with her in it where she's always like kind of hanging out with her brother, Winter and everything. But she wasn't really in it for that long. And when she was, she was just always kind of an asshole. Like there's like a part where a stalactite tries to fall on her and I'm just like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> but yeah, um, basically, um... The whole book just kind of focuses on, you know, who did it and everything. Moon eventually comes out and says to Kinkachu and Quibbly that... And Turtle 
Uh, Turtle, by the way, I forgot to mention him. He's, I didn't even know this, he's Tsunami's brother. Um, one of many, apparently. Tsunami has like 30-something brothers. Which is just like... What? And Queen Coral doesn't give a single fuck about any of them. She's just like, she's just like, you know, they, they can't be queen. Why the fuck should I care? <laughs> and they don't even seem to care either. They're just like, yeah, this is our life. <laughs> Turtle is, is basically the same way. Uh, he's, he's okay. I, I, I thought he was all right. Um, I thought Turtle was just kind of an okay character. Um, I know he's a more prevalent character in book nine if i'm not mistaken and i think an enemy is there too um she has moon has a vision a vision a vision of um an enemy and turtle fighting which like that doesn't happen in this book but i'm really curious now um because I believe Darkstalker explains that, like, your visions are, like, possible futures or something like that. Uh, we're getting into some Back to the Future type shit here. Uh, <laughs> does Darkstalker have a DeLorean? But if that happens in one of the books, I'm actually genuinely curious as to what an enemy did exactly that would make Turtle so pissed off that they're fighting. Like... Shit. <laughs> it must be bad. I've heard that she gets worse and worse, so... I'll take that with a grain of salt, or whatever the hell the saying is. Um, what else can I talk about with this book? So yeah, um... I just can't hammer in enough how much I really like the dynamic between Moon and Darkstalker. I really, really liked it. And I'm pleasantly surprised that he's actually pretty damn funny at points. And I like that, like, sometimes when they're talking, when she's talking to people normally, like, he's, like, intervening with, like, and, like, talking to her, just being like, no, don't answer like that. Or <laughs> some shit like that. He felt. Or, like, I, I kind of like that he's, like, he, I guess he's not, he's not really manipulative as much as he is kind of, like, desperate. And I could see why. I mean, he's in a terrifying situation, by the way. If I woke up after how, he doesn't, he, he found out that, you know, he's been basically asleep for 2,000 years. Like, he's, like, he's the Doom Slayer. Wait, wait a minute. That would explain a lot. Is he Samuel Hayden? <laughs> I'll stop. Anyway, um, um, but getting back on track, I, I referenced Doom. Um, he's in a really bad situation. Like, he's basically in pitch blackness almost, stuck. He can't move or anything, but he's surprisingly keeping his calm. <laughs> like,. I would be crying and freaking out if I was in his situation. There's actually a point towards the end where I actually really started to feel bad. Like, because I actually really wish that this would continue throughout the books. Maybe, it, I don't know if it will in books, in book seven. Um, but Darkstalker's just like, you know, I'm not going to be able to contact you. You're going to be out of my range. I won't be able to talk to you anymore. I'm scared. I'm going to drive myself insane here. Like, oh no! <laughs> Don't leave him! <laughs> I actually really feel bad. <laughs> but I I like that... I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep talking about the Moon and Darkstalker thing, because that was my favorite part of this book. <clears throat> I really like that he wasn't, like, manipulative. He was just, like, I think I said this before, but, like... He... Again, he's actually kind of funny, because he's just, like... You know, I wouldn't call this manipulating as much as it is just me clinging to dear life onto you to be to, for help because I'm kind of screwed down here. He's like, I can talk to everyone else here in this in in Jade Mountain. I can talk to everyone, but they can't hear me. And I like that he's just like, this has led to a lot of you know one-sided conversations. <laughs> like, yeah, of course they can't hear you talking to them. <laughs> I don't know, I really like that part. But overall, I think that this one was just kind of... Okay. I didn't love it, I didn't hate it. I thought it was just... Alright. 
uh, again, I really like that dynamic, and they introduce it pretty early on, so if you ever get a chance to read this one, I... I mean, I haven't read Darkstalker, I have no idea what he's like, so to actually hear him, and not hear him, to read about him, and have him be the way that he is in this, I had no idea he was like this. I literally had no clue he acted like this. And I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised by him, but also I'm pretty upset because I don't know if he acts this way throughout the rest of the books because I know he becomes much more, much more relevant. But I know that book 10 is pretty infamous with him and um... I kind of know what's coming. I mean, I guess it's the same thing with Scarlet. Like, I love her, and I know that it's coming. Like, I know that her end is coming, and I'm getting closer to it. And it's like, ah! <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, like, it, it, it's like the same with Darkstalker, then. I mean, if I'm gonna start liking him, then it's gonna be like, well... There he goes! <laughs> I know it's gonna happen, but I don't know. I'll voice my opinion on that when it happens. Um, uh, but I know it's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, next is Winter Turning. Uh, that should be pretty fun. Uh, that's gonna be mostly, I think, as Winter the main character. I've been told that he acts like mostly a dick in this book, but... He's a lot better. I've been told that he's actually pretty nice, and in his book, he comes out a lot more. Um, which, you know what? I'm looking forward to that, because even the short that we... The, the short of... Ugh, the little that we saw of him, I'm interested. Like, I want to know more about him. Um, he wasn't really that boring of a character. But, um, yeah. Yeah. That was my review of Wings of Fire Book 5. That was the most unorthodox or <laughs> unorganized review of a book I think I've ever done because I don't have a script. Not even something little, like usually on my little uh, laptop tablet thing here. I at least jot, uh, write down a couple things on it or uh, type on my on, uh, like a program to say like, talk about this and this, but I didn't do that. I was just like, no, I finished it now. Let's just talk about it. <laughs> I really should have. I'm probably going to forget to uh, remember something as soon as I post the review. <laughs> but yeah, Wings of Fire Book 6. Have you read it? What did you think about it? What did you think about the dynamic between Moon and Darkstalker? I know p some people ship them. And with me, I'm just like, maybe. But Moon doesn't seem like the type of person to get into a relationship with. She's kind of too awkward for that, but... I mean, I like that she did kind of come out more throughout the book. She's very isolated and very, like, very quiet. And they explain mind reading in a pretty, pretty ex excruciating way. Like, it kind of sucks, actually. And I, I forgot to talk about that, actually. But no, I'm not going to end that review just yet. I like that Darkstalker is also helping her with her powers. Like, he's just like, yeah, and it's likely to drive you insane. But I'm not going to let that happen. So, <laughs> you do this, and this is what's going to help you from not going absolutely batshit crazy, and you're going to drown out people's thoughts like that. And I like that he's helping her. Like, he's just like, yeah, someone really should have told you about this. Like, he's not like, yeah, do this for me, and then I'll teach you how to do my, how to fix your powers or whatever. He's just like, no, nah, you just do this. It's going to take a little bit. I like, that. I like that she tried to drown him out, and he's just like, "Listen, I see what you're doing. It, it it's not gonna work, okay? I, I'm not I'm not that easy." <laughs> I kind of like that part, uh, but yeah, <laughs> I again I have to just no idea that he was like that, and it just it blew my mind. I was just like, "What? <laughs> this is how Darkstalker acts?" Really? <laughs> he's kind of more likable. <laughs> he's not more likable than Scarlet, but still, he's still pretty likable. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, he's pretty funny, actually. Uh, I highly recommend this book just for that aspect of it, but 
in terms of plot wise I thought this was just kind of just sort of okay I kind of felt the same way with book two but book two I think I was a little bit too harsh on and I think I mentioned this before but book two is actually pretty good I liked it um but this one, it just kind of feels like, I don't know if it's just me, but it always feels like in the Wings of Fire book, they always have to like shoehorn in a bad guy for some reason in every single one. I guess you kind of have to, to kind of keep it interesting and everything. But like, eh, I don't know. I wasn't really feeling it with the bad guys in this one. Even though Scarlet is definitely mentioned a lot, she's not really in it. She's only in the epilogue, actually, and that's, I think, leading into book eight, where I think one of her friends, one of Scarlet's friends, has Darkstalker's scroll, which is... Woo! <laughs> that's gonna be interesting. <laughs> I wonder if he gets it back. He probably does, because he needs that to get out. I forgot to mention that. He needs to get that thing to get him out of there where he is, because he's currently stuck. Alec... Oh, I forgot to mention that, actually. I keep trying to end the review, but I'm trying to... I'm remembering more stuff as I'm going. Darkstalker's just like, you know, I put all my powers into this one thing. I was trying to be like, hey, listen, this shit's not going to drive me mad, okay? It's done it to other dragons. It's not going to do it to me, okay? Didn't work, obviously, but... <laughs> he lost it. The thing that he put all his powers into. He lost that, so he's currently kind of stuck. And... He needs that thing, and I like that Moon's just like, so if I find it, can I be like, please tell me where Darkstalker is? And he's just like, I mean, I gotta admit, I've never said please, but I I, I guess you can. <laughs> I like that line. <laughs> he was like, when I was doing when I was doing all my enchantments and everything, dude, I never said that, but I I mean I guess you could. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm I'm feeling homey right now. Literally, because I'm holding this book. I'll stop. Anyway. But, I am I mean, I'm interested in this dude, even though he's looking at me kind of weird. Anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> I forgot to mention that critical part. Um, I am super, super hyped to read more about Darkstalker and his character and everything. But, I want to go into book six then read Darkstalker because I know I have to mm. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to do it I don't want to do it I really really don't want to do it I gotta do it though oh shit dude I gotta read this one and it kills me every day man <laughs> every single time I pull the book off the shelf to to, to read whatever one I'm on and I see that one I'm just like oh no <laughs> like I just know that it's coming <sighs> guess it's like getting a needle it sucks it'll be over before you know it but anyway finishing up my review that's it this is going on for way too long it's almost 40 minutes now I don't want to take up you guys too much time here um, but that is my review of book six. It was pretty good. I didn't really care about the plot that much. And, you know, the new characters, I think, have potential to grow more um, throughout the rest of the books. But the freaking moon and dark stalker element to this was just... It's, it's like its like, its like like Venom. You know, like, you have, like, the, the symbiote and, and freaking whatever the hell Tom Hardy's character or whatever freaking talking in that movie. I'm, it, it's almost like that, okay, but better. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's been my review. I will see you guys next time. Tell me if you've read this book, and yeah, <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next review when I review book uh, book seven. Or if I just decide to say screw it, I'm going straight to Darkstalker. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>